we, a core group of us, a core group of, of, of devotees at Krishna Life were originally in New York, as some of you might have known. And, um, I mean, Mahotsa, how long are you in New York? Uh, I'd say six years. Six years. Mahotsa, we joined there. Um, I came to New York in 2017. Um, by the blessings of Maharaj to uh, try to do something here in the West. And um, so we were in New York, we were happy in New York. We were distributing a lot of books. Um, do you want to tell that now a little later? Okay, all right. So we were distributing books, we were doing Harinam for six hours every day. And um, um, then suddenly out of the blue, the pandemic came in 2020. We didn't know what to do. See, we, did, we had a townhouse in New York and we were about uh, 11 of us, 11 or 12 of us, um, 12 brahmacharis. We had this townhouse and uh, when they said lockdown and in New York, the news was crazy. You know, first, um, supermarkets put, you know, restrictions on how much supplies you could, you could buy. And I became very uh, scared <laughs> as to how we were going to feed all the devotees. And, 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 and then just looking at, in New York, if you can't step out of your house, it, it suddenly feels like you're in prison. <laughs> because it's very, it's very small. It's, it, it, after, after leaving New York, I'm actually surprised as to how you were. You know, when we, when we, when we first went back to New York, um, uh, with, with, with the intention of vacating the place, that's when we realized how small our place was. Because we were, we had spent about a month and a half out in Prabhupada village in North Carolina. And we couldn't believe how we were living in such a small place. Um, so, anyways, the pandemic hit and then we, we frantically started calling different places and the only place that was willing to, um, you know, take us in because the pandemic had already started. We were from New York. Suddenly, it was quite amazing. What was something very prestigious? You know, we're from New York. And then now, you're from New York. You know, because it was like, you're, you're like COVID personified. Like, you must be carrying COVID. You know, it was like, it was a huge stigma. It was, so quite, quite a few things were going on at that point of time. We, we didn't understand. And as, as, as till today, we survived our income was solely through book distribution. And if we couldn't do book distribution, we didn't know how we were going to maintain ourselves. So, um, you want to say a little bit about online? No, oh, yeah. So, um, you know, we, like, like we said, uh, book distribution is the only solution. So, we that easy to tell. Anyway, so um, we were thinking about how we should actually go about distributing books. And, uh, you know, we couldn't go out on the streets of New York. So, you know, I remember I was sitting outside the window, I was looking right outside, I'm sorry, I wasn't sitting outside the window. I was sitting inside the room and looking outside the window. I remember I seeing there was a grocery truck which had come in and um, they, you know, yeah, whatever, what drop off groceries and all that. And I thought that, okay, you know, for the body, the food is so essential, but more essential than food for the body is Prabhupada's books for the soul. So then I thought that, okay, if these people are able to get groceries, they can get your Prabhupada's books. So then, uh, you know, I was chanting, I was praying, uh, I was really, really praying as uh, hard as I could. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then, and then somehow the other, I got this idea that I could start distributing books online. And, uh, you know, we started distributing books, and all of a sudden there was like this explosion of Bhagavatams, you know, and we just like, flying out, you know, we, I almost felt like I had like some kind of mystic power where I would just uh, touch my phone and like, I'd just be on my phone, you know, usually you're on your books, you're like standing on your feet and you're like, you know, going to shooting books for six, seven hours and like your legs hurt and your, and your hands hurt and this and that, but for me, the main thing which was hurting was my neck because I was like on my phone the whole time. So anyway, you know, we st I started shooting books and then there was like this explosion of Bhagavatams like all over the world, literally. We sold sets in, in, in uh, Australia, in South America, in Russia, in uh, Norway. I, I, don't, I don't even, some of the languages that we sold books in, I didn't, I didn't know the language. So I was just like using Google Translate, like translate whatever they would say. And then I would say something in English and use Google Translate and send it back. So we had a 
back and forth like this in like that we were able to shoot Bhagavatam. I remember like in one month, it was really huge for us at that point in time. I think in one month we did 50 Bhagavatams. And we were like, wow, that's so amazing. We did 50 Bhagavatams in a month. And then we started just doing more and more and more and just started increasing like that. And that's how we actually were able to survive a good part of the pandemic. Yeah, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, I called up a bunch of brothers like, Prabhu, we can't step out of the door, you know, you can't go out, it's called lockdown. And he was like, what the hell is that lockdown? And he's like, you know, you, can't, you, can't, you can't distribute books. Yeah. He was like, can't distribute books? I was like, yes, no, it looks like you No, but you can't. I remember him like, you know, having a serious argument about, about you cannot distribute books right now. And he was like, no, there can never be a time where you cannot distribute books. Yeah, and there's actually a quote in, in the Prabhupada's books that he said that the mercy of Lord Shaitanya is that we'll always have customers. That makes we sell the books, we don't give it for free. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, okay, you figure it out. You know? <laughs> and he actually did it, he actually figured it out. And, and then, and, and that, was, that, that was the main thing. That, so then he immediately taught it to um, you know, a couple of the other book distributors in the temple. And immediately, we realized we were doing more books online than we were doing in the streets of New York before the pandemic had began. I couldn't believe it. And I was like amazed how, was, how this was happening. Yeah, I guess I couldn't escape my South Indian guna and karma of being an IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then, uh, you know, we, we were in Prabhupada village for some time and that was you know, we, 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 we had the good fortune of having some very nice uh, senior association there. Um, you know, um, yes. Shivananda Prabhu, his, his wife, Shauri Prabhu and his wife, and yeah, Madhuha Prabhu. Madhuha Prabhu was kind enough to allow us to stay there. And um, yeah, so you know, we stayed there for some time, but then after some time, you know, I, you know we were thinking, so, First we thought we'll go back to New York, yeah, 30 day, what is that, uh, 15 day lockdown, okay, maybe maybe one month we'll be there and then we'll be back in New York. But then it just kept going on and on and on. And um, so then we were, as we were trying to figure out, because it was a temporary situation, we weren't meant to stay there in Prabhupada village, and we were kind of like, we were straining everything with our um, presence, and so we were thinking, okay, we have to move somewhere. So then. I started calling up different places. I, um, I, I remember uh, reaching out to, to Venkatesh, who's over here, um, and, and, and asking, can we come and stay in your house in Indianapolis? Or like, can we, is there some place we can come and stay? I was calling Alachua to try to see if I could, we could you know, move the Brahmachari Ashram there. But we were looking at, at, at different places. Not as a permanent move, nothing was like intended to be permanent, but maybe move closer to a city. And um, that's when um, Bhakta Ram, um, oh, there he is. so, Ram. Um, you know, he, he called us out of the blue. And Bhakta Ram is someone we, we, we met on book distribution in Long Island in, in, in New York, right? So, you wanna say something? Yeah. The, the only books he distributed, Ram, there he is, wow. Ram, Jai Shri Ram. Thank you so much for coming in right on time. So, yeah, my, our Guru Maharaj actually said his Ram smirks there in Atlanta. So, you know, we, we, we remember, you know, we were meeting Ram in Long Island. We thought it's going to be a huge book distribution gig. It's going to like be our biggest ever or whatever. And we went there, it was really bad. And the only person we met was Ram. And, the, and we distributed books to Ram. And, uh, you know, Ram, and not only we, we distributed some books, and then we also sold Ram later in the future, Bhagavatam set, right? Ram then went uh, to New Vrindavan and uh, met Apura Prabhu and his um, good wife and then got in touch with um, them, started doing the Bhagavatam uh, calls and was practically cultivated by them. And then, but you know, occasionally he would stay in touch with us. I remember, you know, he would send, he would send regular donations yeah. like this. And then uh, he called me out of the blue, just when we were looking for a place. He was like, Prabhu, I want, you know, I want to improve my sadhana a little bit. Can I come and stay with, with, with all of you for a little bit? I was like, oh, we're looking to stay somewhere else. And then he was like, why don't you come to my house? And I remember telling him, I was like, Ram, maybe you don't 
don't get it, you're a single man, you probably don't have such a big place, you know, with like 12 guys, you know, it's like, it's a lot. And he's like, no, 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 you come and see my house. So then we drove down from Prabhupada village to enter Atlanta, you know, and Ram's place was perfect. Was perfect. It was fantastic, <laughs> you know, and so we all moved down there. And um, it also happened to be, Georgia happened to, controversially at that point of time, happened to be the state that got out of COVID restrictions the first. It was the first state to come out of it, Brian Kemp was um, uh, popular and uh, unpopular at the same time. So we thought, okay. So then we actually ventured out. We thought it was Nirsima Chaturdasi. And we thought, okay, it's Nirsima Chaturdasi. Nirsima protects everybody. Let's go on Harima. And we'll maintain social distancing. We'll go on Harima. And we didn't do it. But anyways, we went out. And then so we went out on Harina. Yeah. And like, so we. Joseph, you ready? So you don't, don't put it before I ask you. Okay. So you're ready, though, right? Okay. So, you know, we went out on boats and we went on Harinam. We went out on Harinam that day and then. Uh, we were about to stop in Piedmont Park, and by the way, Piedmont Park is a theater because Sri Prabhupada actually took his morning walk in Piedmont Park. So, uh, you know, we decided we're going to go to Piedmont Park, and then when we went, when we went to Piedmont Park, right at, before the car stopped, okay, it was before the car stopped, I saw this guy, and sometimes when you're on the books, when you see someone, you know they're going to buy books from you, just you know that they look like a walking Srimad Bhagavatam set, or like, they look like a walking whatever stuff that is walking yeah. A walking Sapta Rishi, like, oh, that guy is a Sapta Rishi, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So then, you know, we were driving by, and then before the car stopped, I just had this urge to like, jump out of the moving car. Don't try this at home. I, I, had, I had this urge to jump out of the moving car with books. And I, just, I remember I just literally, like, bounced on this guy. And, like, and I was just like, my man, what's up? And I, and I don't know what exactly I said. And then I don't know what I told him in like one less than a minute he bought a Saptarishi set. And this is a picture of him. And this is on Narsama Chaturdashi, okay? So he, he bought this the Saptarishi set, and then when he bought the Saptarishi set on his t-shirt, he realized he had a line on his t-shirt. You know, so like we actually saw it. First, the first set we distributed on the streets of Atlanta ever. Is that and in then June? huh? Is that in June or not? I don't know what it was. Narsama Chaturdashi. May, 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 May 5th. May 5th, wow. May 5th, 2020. That's amazing. Yeah, so like, you know, so he actually had a, net, a lion on his t-shirt. So we thought that, wow, that's amazing. It's going to be like the, you know, it's, it's going to be protected. We're going to be protected by Lord Nishimide. You know, and that turns out we were. Yeah. Definitely that was a very encouraging sign for all of us. And then we just, all right, I think, I think that's, 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 that's the green light for going crazy. Yeah. So. After that, we had a party in Atlanta, and 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 little did we know, I mean, you know, we, because 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 of the lockdown, everybody was, you know, because you had to stay in outdoor spaces. Piedmont Park was packed wow. every single every day, day. It was packed. <laughs> we had we had a lot of we had a lot of fun in those days, you know. So, um, anyways, um, after that, so you know, you can talk about the expansion. Yeah. Well. And the, so we're now in Atlanta, and people are taking books. And then people start to ask, you know, so you guys are monks, you have something going on. And then we were like, oh, I guess we should have something going on. So, so then, we, then, we, then we, we thought, okay, so let's just invite people. And we didn't want to really print something. So, I was you know, we would just, we, we would just, we just thought, okay, we'll just send text messages and invite people to Ram's house. Now, Ram's house is in a suburb of Atlanta, Snellville. Which from Piedmont Park was like 45 minutes. To an hour, yeah. yeah, something like 40, 45 minutes away. It was quite, quite the distance. And so that, I mean, nobody's gonna come. But in New York, nobody came anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, you know, one day, one day. our New York Sunday feast, the max number of people we had was eight. Eight people. Eight, and we were celebrating. Oh, wow. we got so many people, so many <laughs> guests, <laughs> a big Sunday feast. <laughs> you know, so. The first time we had a Sunday feast in Atlanta, and um, Dr. Nick came for that. Nick came on the second Nick, Nick came for the second Nick, one. Right? You came with the second one, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Nick came for the second one. Bakhtin. The first one, how many people? We had, like we had, 30, we had, no, we had 25, 30, something like that. Yeah, 25, 30 people, and we couldn't believe it. And they'd come all the way out, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, which, I mean, here, the people never cared. So, 
Yeah. Um, and yeah. you sit and talk for hours. And then, and then, yeah, that was the other thing. In New York, everyone's like frantic, you know, you know, I gotta keep running. But here, people are really laid back, relaxed. They seem to have the whole day to talk to you. And so, you know, we would talk to them and spend a lot of time, and that's how our Sunday program started. Yeah, and it just like got so good that the neighbors got fried out of it. And then uh, they call, they call the, the they 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 oh, call they, the, they the informed the, the county. The, yeah. <laughs> so they informed the county, and then the county came and kicked us out, yeah. saying that well, this is not a church, and you're not supposed to run it like a church; it's the neighborhood. So then we were we were in the situation that we had to leave. We we had like yeah, we had one month. We had to figure a place in one month. We had to find and rent a place in one month, and we started like frantically searching, and I was quite concerned because. You know, already we've been kicked out once. So it's because this, this is my first experience in New York. Anything goes. You take any building, do anything you want with it. And nobody, you know, everything, everything happens in New York. So, but outside New York, there's, there's actually these kind of things that exist in the country. You don't know that when you're in New York. <laughs> so, so we've already experienced it once and I didn't want to experience it again. So we were looking for houses like, or some buildings on main roads and we were looking so, so many places we were looking for. And then we finally found this, this one place uh, on Ponce de Leon. After we signed the lease, we realized we were like two minutes away. We were like one block away from the temple. <laughs> but so no, we, no we didn't we didn't we, but anyways, the temple didn't have programs at that time. It's gonna kind of later. So huh? yeah. yes, it's called Atlanta. Yeah, we were we were we were ten minutes away from the from the no, no, uh, one, yeah, block. one block, so 10 minute, not even a 10 minute walk actually, yeah. So, like this, our Sunday program started, we, you know, things started rolling, book distribution started expanding. In the meantime, actually, until we found a place, we didn't want to stop our Sunday program. So we were doing Sunday programs at Piedmont Park. Under a tree. Like this kind of a tent, or like under a tree, we set up a tent. And uh, I don't know. No tent. There was actually, there was no tent. We would be under the tree and we would rain. We would still sit under the tree. And no, there was a tent for Pushan. Okay. Red tent. There, there was a tent. There was a tent for Pushan. <laughs> but, and, and I remember, you know, especially uh, Kamra Mataji, who was who, who still, yeah, yeah she, she, uh, you know, she, she, she was one of our congregation members. She remembers that she was like, who are these monks? And she told you, yeah. right? Yeah. She said, when I saw you all in the park, I thought you were just a bunch of homeless monks. <laughs> So, so, so this is what this is what I'm talking about is July 2020. Right? This is this is July 2020. We're considered homeless monks doing our Sunday program under a tree in Piedmont Park and serving prasadam under a tent over there. And so then we get this Ponce de Leon place. It was a really nice place. I mean, you know, we our preaching really took off after we got that place, and um, our Sunday program started growing, growing, growing. And the very same year, on Govardhan Puja, we held this really, really nice festival. On Govardhan Puja, we called it the Food Mountain Festival. You know, and people like the name, it, the Food Mountain, because in Atlanta, it's a stone mountain, so it's the Food Mountain. So Food Mountain Festival. And um, that festival, how many people did you get? We had 120 guests. And it's a small, it's not like really big. And, and there were two Indians. So it was all like local people. So during that festival, we had Kirtan going on. And I remember coming downstairs, I forgot who told me that, that I, it was, no. Yeah, Gopal Champo Prabhu who was with us at that time. He was like, Prabhu, you have to come downstairs. And the, the, the floor is shaking. <laughs> so then I actually go downstairs and you see the ceiling lights. They're like, they're like, you know, <laughs> bouncing up and down. I was so scared. I was like, and there's kids, there's, there's all people up there, and they're all jumping up and down in the kirtan, and I was like really scared. Anyways, but then, I, then we kind of went and calmed down the kirtan, but that's when we realized that, you know, we, we've outgrown the space, we've outgrown the people space too quickly. The stairs, people are like, so then during Prashadam time, people were sitting on the stairs, they were sitting everywhere, and it was like, so, we thought, okay, it looks like, you know, we have to find another place. And then we started looking for one. 
We actually didn't like this place when we first saw it. And then anyway, we saw it and uh, it was really good, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah anyway, we, we, we just saw like the, you know, book distribution is expanding so much. You know, and Prabhupada actually says in one place that if you keep distributing books, a temple will fall on your head. <coughs> so this temple fell on our head as we were distributing books. And uh, it literally, literally fell on our head. Yeah, so, so we were we were looking for places we didn't really like anything and everything was and, and first of all we didn't have any idea how we were going to pay for it. Um, we came in contact with with uh, with, with with the devotee uh, yeah in Orlando and he helped us get high interest loans with which we we bought this building. So this building is still under a loan of 1.1 million that we're paying at eight interest eight percent interest every month. Off of my reasoning was that the, the place we were paying, um, in Ponce de Leon, we were paying a rent of $5,000 a month. 8% interest is $7,333. So I thought, okay, $2,300, approximately $2,300 more. I'll be paying rent as interest, but we get a big place. And then we can, we can, we can try to you know, expand preaching and then eventually, you know, Krishna will send some Lakshmi. So we kind of came to this conclusion, Maharaj, I mean, Maharaj actually encouraged us, which yeah, was like very it. surprising because it was, from, from a business perspective, it was highly risky. Mm -hmm. It was very risky. We're su simply surviving on books. And I remember one of our, one of our God brothers, um, you know, in, in, who now, who's now in India, he was in ISV formerly. He later told us, he, um, he, he, he recounts telling Maharaj that, I don't know how you, you managed to get them to do this. Because from a business perspective, and I'm a businessman, I would never do this. And I would never do this. A very risky um, venture. But but then Maharaj told him that well I was the one who pushed them to do it. You know, so so when we looked at this place first, yeah. Maharaj actually said, I'll just sit in India and chant and give you my blessings, you do the work. <laughs> he said that. Yeah, he, he said, said that. that. <laughs> did say that. So um, we got this place and see at that point of time I was also thinking because we're getting all these western devotees um, but why do we need a temple? As a Brahmachari Ashram we were very happy. We were very happy even the current facility was very good. Why do we get it? Why do we need a temple? Because to create more service opportunity. To create more opportunities for service. Not just for those who are willing to be um, male monks but for those who, um, for those who are family people, for women, for um, uh, those uh, who will get married, to create a community. Um, so for this reason, we need a temple. So um, when we first looked at this place, we didn't like it. And then you know we got it eventually. When we, but then when we did a walk around, I remember Mahotsa Prabhu and myself. We just suddenly we were like, this could be here. This. The restaurant would be here. The books. The, this is where the book storage is going to be. This is the prasadam. This is the temple room. This is this is where we're going to have this. This will be the Brahmacharya Ashram. It all just played out in the matter of like just doing one tour around the building. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. So and actually, you know, we, we really like to thank some of our God siblings, Shiva Shambhu and his wife, Radhika Gopinath Prabhu, Falgun Prabhu, uh, Sureshwar Shambhu, Kishore Kishore Prabhu, Kishore Kishore Prabhu I mean, Prabhin Govinda Prabhu. We actually needed a loan of five hundred thousand dollars in two days, and they gave it to us. <laughs> and they gave it to us. That was the whole roller coaster. That there was there were so many challenges. Later, we'll probably write about these things. Yeah. Um, but there were so many challenges in getting this place. But in every step of the way, there were so many signs from Krishna that He really wanted us to do this. There were challenges, but the challenges were clear. The obstacles were clear. Somehow or the other, the obstacles were clear, and we would and we would, we would move forward. And, and, and we paid all, like, except that 1.1 million, which we still owe, we paid back all our other God siblings like we said we would pay back. You know, we wanted to keep our word and that's like something that, that matters a lot to us. Because we want, we, we know that our actions also give um, either a good or a bad reputation to, 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 our, to our spiritual master. And so we wanted to be good disciples. Um, and then after we got this place, book distribution exploded. So we have some numbers that we would like to read out. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should say. So, it's okay, this is most important. 
So, just to give you an idea of how much book distribution is expanded, right? We did, we did in 2015, our total book scores for the year was 8,888. Books. 20, yeah, books. The whole year? The whole year. 2016, 14,905. 2017, 36,512. 2018, 47,713. 2019, 55,855. And? And in 2020, we actually had 76,875 books. In 2021, is uh, it, the whole of 2021, one, how do I leave this number? <laughs> one, no, 129, 129,479 books in 2021. And in 2022, as of now, till day, we are at 125,000 books. Haribo! Haribo! It ain't over to the soul. So we know you still have it until December. So we're going to go smash, dash, and bash this previous year's book scores. So even, even uh, you know, revenue-wise, you know, we were, um, like in, in 2020, 2021, we had, uh, we have grossed over one million dollars, and it's all book distribution primarily. You know, there's a few some donations here and there, but we gross means that that is that's our profit. It's gross, meaning that we still have a lot of expenses and everything. And and oh yeah, we have a video. That's right. So um, so we grossed over a million this year till date, um, which we're. Um, at, uh, we're in the end of August. Um, we're already over. We're already over 1.1 1. Uh, 1 million. One, oh yeah, sorry, 1.6 million. Right. That's 1.6 million this year. But you know, there's. So in this building, we have to put after buying 1.1 million dollars, we have to put 700 thousand dollars to bring it up to where it is right now. There's a lot more. So and there's a lot more. So we have a future project. We're gonna quickly yeah. play this video and then we're gonna end here. Yeah, I can't see anything. 